Welcome to the second lesson for test one of the OCR entry level certificate in computer science, covering the internal components of the computer system. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify a range of internal components inside a computer system and be able to describe their purpose and function. Let's begin by meeting the components you need to know about. You will need to know about the motherboard, the central processing unit, or CPU, the random access memory, or RAM, the basic input-output system, or BIOS, and the hard disk drive. Our first component is the motherboard. The motherboard is a circuit board that sits inside your computer and allows all the other components to plug into it. There are sockets to plug in the RAM, the CPU, graphics cards, sound cards, network interface cards, and connectors for connecting hard disk drives and CD, DVD or Blu-ray drives. The motherboard carries data between all the different components using electronic circuits called buses. The motherboard also contains built-in chips, one of which houses the basic input-output system we will look at later. Our next internal component is the central processing unit which is often abbreviated to the letters CPU. This acts like the brains of the computer. It is made up of three parts. The arithmetic and logic unit, which performs all the calculations and makes the logical decisions. The control unit, which coordinates the movement of data around the CPU and to the other components in the computer. And registers, which are small amounts of super fast memory built directly into the processor to store data as it is being processed. The CPU is the fastest part of the computer system, with modern day processors being capable of performing billions of calculations per second. Next up we have the random access memory, or RAM. This is the main form of primary storage in a computer system. When data is loaded from the computer's hard drive, it is stored in RAM before being processed by the CPU. When it has been processed, the processed data is then stored back in RAM, and this allows you to open and use software on your computer. In fact, the web browser and other software you have open on your computer now is working because it is stored in RAM. RAM is classed as volatile, which means that as soon as it loses power, such as when the computer is switched off, then the data which is stored in it will be lost, unless it is saved to a secondary storage device first. When the computer is on, the data is held in RAM and has to be refreshed regularly so that it is not lost. When we want to store data stored in RAM, we use a secondary storage device. The hard disk drive is where most data is stored in a computer system, as it has a large capacity, meaning it can store lots of data, and hard disks are relatively cheap and reliable. The hard disk drive is non-volatile, meaning that it stores data even when the computer's power is off. We install software to the hard drive, such as the operating system, games and application software. We also store our documents, photos and movies to a hard disk drive. Our final internal component is not exactly a hardware device as such, although it is stored on a ROM chip which stands for read-only memory. This ROM chip has a piece of software written to it called the BIOS, which stands for Basic Input-Output System. Remember this for the test. The main function of the BIOS is to allow you to use your keyboard, mouse and screen as soon as the computer is turned on and before the operating system loads. It contains device drivers, which are small pieces of software which enable the basic functions of your computer. People can use the BIOS to set the time and date, the order in which the internal devices are checked for an operating system to boot up, and can use this to adjust the power levels of certain components, such as the central processing unit, which allows them to overclock it, resulting in them running faster than they are designed to. There is a lot of information in this video. Ensure you have taken notes and write them up in a way that is easy to revise from. This concludes the section on hardware. We will examine software next 
and then you should be ready to take test one. Thanks for watching.